Hi everybody, Sean here from Go Big Bore or Go Home. Welcome to the first ever First Friday Fives. This is going to be a new series we're going to do on the first Friday of every month. We're going to bring you a top five, or in some cases, a bottom five list. And to kick off the series, I figured the best way to start was with my personal favorite top five big bore calibers. So without further ado, here we go. Number five, the 10 millimeter auto. The 10 millimeter was designed in 1983 and was originally only available in the Bren 10. Sadly, production issues and a high cost led to the pistol's demise by 1986. Things looked grim for the 10 millimeter, but it was thankfully saved by the production of Colt's 1911 style Delta Elite and the FBI adopting the cartridge in 1989. However, the FBI started having some issues due to the noticeable recoil of the 10 and the fact that a fully loaded cartridge with bullet was 32 millimeters long, just like the 45 ACP. This required a bigger grip for semi-auto pistols to house the magazine, which some agents objected to. To combat the problem, ammunition manufacturers started to make a less powerful load that was nicknamed 10 millimeter light or 10 millimeter FBI. And just like with any semi-auto, when you reduce the power of the cartridge, you also are creating a change in how the slide moves. Malfunctions started to occur. Smith & Wesson noticed this and from there developed the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge to combat both recoil and malfunction problems. 23, Not to mention it was a shorter cartridge that could now be used in a smaller framed pistol. And with that, save for the special hostage and SWAT teams that still used it, the 10 millimeter started looking like a has-been. At one point, only Glock appeared to be producing anything in that caliber. But after the turn of the century, something awesome happened. The 10 millimeter devoted had continued to sing its praises for self-defense, hunting, and accuracy, and a resurgence began that has now made the 10 millimeter a big player once again. So what about the 10 to put it in my top five? Well, it's versatile, it's powerful, and it's accurate. Nice. What else? You can find a variety of loads from standard manufacturers that just edge out of the 40 Smith & Wesson, and if you go to Double Tap, Underwood, or Buffalo Bore, you can find wrist-wrenching, long-distance covering, full-power loads for everything from target shooting to hunting. So what's not to like that made it only take the number five spot? Two main factors, and the first should come as no surprise. Recoil. As a high-pressure cartridge, the 10 millimeter recoils fast, and it has noticeable muzzle flip. It won't kill you, but you will know immediately that this ain't no 9 mil. And number two, the cost of ammo. Being still less mainstream than 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, or the 45 ACP, the ammo can get pricey and fast. If you don't like recoil or you're on a tight budget, you might want to pass. But if you like the versatility and power this cartridge brings, then you'll love the caliber I refer to as the original semi-auto big bore badass. Number 4. The 45 Long Colt. The legend lives on. For those of us who grew up watching westerns with our father or recall Mike TV and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory referencing it, this was THE cartridge a cowboy type should have. Developed in 1872 to be used in revolvers being produced for the army, the 45 Long Colt was loaded up with between 28 and 40 grains of black powder and projected a 230 to 255 grain bullet at up to 1,050 feet per second. Known for power and accuracy, it was a popular round of the day for Colt pistols. Unlike the 4440 Winchester, it was never put into a lever-action rifle and did not see dual-purpose use until late into the 20th century. There are some sources that say this is because the cartridge had a smaller rim back in the day that made ejecting the shell unreliable in a lever-action. But Colt would also not allow other manufacturers to produce firearms in their caliber. Yeah, because, you know, limiting versatility always sells more units. So until the patents were up, if you wanted a 45 Long Colt gun, you had to go Colt. I have it on my list at number four because it's legendary. The first real 45 caliber we all were aware of. And if you have a large frame revolver that can take a beating, you can load some hot rounds that are very, very versatile. The downside of the cartridge is that it's not as easy to find as price similar to the 44 Magnum for not so hot rounds, and that there are other cartridges in and around the 45 caliber that are superior. Still, it's effective, and with that, nostalgia take us away. Number 3, the 454 Casul. You want power? You want accuracy at a distance? You want the ability to scoff at the 44 Magnum fanboys? Then this is the cartridge for you. Developed in 1958 by Dick Casul and Jack Fulmer, 
It was announced in 1959. The cartridge was originally designed to provide enough handgun power to hunt medium to large game, protect a traveler against large bear, and for use in silhouette shooting. It was a true hand cannon. The 454 Kazoo quickly overshadowed the 44 Magnum in the power department and remained the most powerful handgun cartridge until 2003 when the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum was released. The Linebaugh cartridges developed in the 80s gave it a run for its money, but they remained Wildcat cartridges, and today only the 475 Linebaugh is being sold straight from the factory. That's right, Inspector Callahan wasn't really wielding the most powerful handgun in the world. For shame, Harry. Lying is naughty. Yeah. In one respect, he was telling the truth as no manufacturer chambered a factory firearm in the 454 Casul until 1983, when Freedom Arms took the first step into bringing this bad boy into the mainstream. In 1997, Ruger chambered their Super Red Hawk in the cartridge, and in 1998, Taurus released their five-shot Raging Bull to great success. Since then, it has continued to gain in popularity. Singing praises like this, you'd expect it to be further up the list. But the 454 Casul has its drawbacks. Ammunition is still not produced as widely as many other calibers, and your options for firearms are limited to Ruger, Taurus, Freedom Arms, and Magnum Research's BFR. Still, shooting the 454 is usually a short-lived affair, so the cost of ammo isn't too problematic. Why short-lived? Monstrous recoil. I dubbed my 454 Castle as in Frank Castle, the Punisher's real name, because punishing is a perfect description for the recoil you'll experience. Tons of powder, heavy bullets, and pressure that can go as high as 60,000 CUP all create the perfect storm right there in your hands. Some guns kick backwards hard, others recoil fast, and some are snappy with a pressure-induced muzzle flip, but only the 454 Casul does all three. If it sounds like I'm complaining, let me say that I've been shooting for over 20 years and have never had a gun that made me want to take a break from the recoil until I fired the 454. Even more experienced shooters tell the same tale. Below you'll find a link to a video from Hickok45. He's an excellent shooter, no wimp when it comes to handling recoil, and a big man at 6 feet 8 inches tall. Still, his sentiments regarding the recoil are similar to mine. But if you want a caliber that will make you say, wow, this is it. And shortly after, you lose the first W, and it'll it will just be, what do I do uh, yeah. Yeah. Number two, the 44 Remington Magnum. Go ahead, make my day. Sure, it's not the most powerful big bore out there, but it's still one powerful cartridge. Released in 1955, this was the result of years of experimental handloading by Elmer Keith. He had been working with the 44 Special cartridge for two reasons. The cartridge walls were thicker than that of the 45 Long Colt, and the smaller caliber meant thicker and thus stronger cylinder walls. Hey, if you're adding power, it makes sense to not screw around with a gun that might not handle it, right? Designed for close-range hunting and silhouette shooting, the 44 Magnum delivers the goods. The legendary Smith & Wesson Model 29 was the first gun made to be chambered for the cartridge, and while it got off to a slow start, the Dirty Harry films brought it into the spotlight and the consciousness of the popular culture. Being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? I mean, seriously, how cool was Clint Eastwood as Harry Callahan wielding that big 44? You can load the cartridges light to reduce recoil, or hot to go the distance and take down game. While the 44 Magnum has some substantial recoil, and is often the most powerful handgun cartridge most shooters are willing to handle, the recoil is tolerable and it won't kill you, provided you're prepared for it. And it's one hell of an accurate cartridge too. This is the cartridge I personally tend to be most accurate with. My last two trips to the range with my 44 Magnum Super Red Hawk in tow, it was always the gun that grouped the best out of everything I brought with me. Plus, unlike the 454, there are tons of options for many manufacturers when it comes to choosing a firearm. And you can even get a semi-auto option with the Desert Eagle. So why isn't it number one? Well, the recoil does take its toll. It's never left me with sore hands for two days like my 454 Casul has, but it wears me out faster and makes range trips a bit shorter. 
Plus, good, strong, accurate ammo is always $40 plus for 50 rounds, putting a damper on your checkbook balance. You can't afford to shoot it all day, and even if you could, eventually you're going to get tired and start shooting groups that look like you fired buckshot at the target. And now, for my favorite big bore cartridge of all time. Drum roll, please. The 45 ACP. Ooh. What? Too, too, too trendy? Hey, 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 hear me out. Designed in 1904 to answer the U.S. Army's request for a 45 caliber cartridge to go with their new semi-automatic sidearm, Colt answered with what is quite possibly one of the most loved big bore cartridges of all time. And what a cartridge! It's accurate at short to medium ranges like a sidearm should be, it's got sufficient power to be effective self-defense, the recoil is reasonable, and it's low pressure keeps it from being snappy. How could this not make number one? I mean, it was the U.S. Army sidearm caliber for 75 years. All that said, no cartridge is without flaws. The 45 ACP isn't a fast-moving round and can start to lose accuracy after 25, max 50 yards. The ammo can get pricey, or at least pricier than 9mm, and speaking from personal experience, it's heavy enough to weigh you down when you're carrying spare magazines. Seriously, carrying around 30 rounds of 230 grain ammo is heavy. Not to mention what every 45 ACP shooter dreads at the end of a day at the range. Cleaning. This has to be one of the dirtiest cartridges on the market. It's kind of like having a food fight. It's a blast. Until you have to go clean it up. But it is the original big bore semi-auto and a cartridge I can shoot all day and have fun doing. So there you have it. I'm sorry if number one wasn't more interesting or esoteric, but hey, sometimes a popular choice is the right choice, right? Ooh. Well, anyway, thanks for joining us for First Friday Fives. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, please give the like button a click and come and see us again next month when we have a new list. Thanks very much for joining us and visit us on Facebook. And remember, go big bore or go home.